I love the feel, I love the look. I love the formal typesetting, the page-long paragraphs, the formal language, the complete absence of footnotes and references. But they're musty, they're fragile, and really, they're risky, to lend out. You don't know if they're going to come back intact. They're hardly how I would want to store my operational data. And so after the era of books as data, we got to go to digital data sets. But so often the data did, and frequently still does, exist as a local file on one person's own computer where it may not be able to do much good, except for that one person's desktop. Organizations have always been trying to find ways to get the message out. And several developments in data storage have helped with that goal and helped deal with the massive quantities of data that are part and parcel of big data. The first solution, the first step, in this direction was the creation of data warehouses. A data warehouse is a unified place to keep an organization's data sets. So think of it as a server that has all the data sets on it. Now there are several advantages to data warehouses. Number one, the data is typically well-structured and curated. And it's well-structured in part because data warehouses often could only take one kind of data, and it would usually be a relational database with the rows and columns of tables. And in addition to that, a data warehouse may contain discrete organizational units. So, for instance, accounting might have their own part of the warehouse, and sales might have their own part of the warehouse. And this was one way to organize things. Now these were very popular, say, for instance, back in the 70s and 80s. But there was a problem in that you ran the risk of ending up with a data dead zone, an abandoned data warehouse. The reliance on structured data worked well, for a lot of purposes, but the explosion of big data brought in enormous amounts of unstructured and semi-structured data that didn't fit well in the systems. In addition, warehouses sometimes perpetuated the existence of organizational silos, or these walls between units, that didn't communicate well. And truthfully, that undermined some of the promise of the data revolution. And so for many organizations, the data warehouse kind of came, it solved some problems, but then it seemed to bring along some potential problems of its own. That led to the development of our next solution and next metaphor, the data lake. This is a data storage that holds data that is structured and semi-structured and unstructured. Any kind of data can go in there, so it's enormously flexible. And it's designed to do away with data silos that all of the organization's data from every unit can go in there. And so it's potentially available to whoever needs it. And really, it's the existence of data lakes through things like Hadoop that made the big data revolution possible. But just as with data warehouses, there are some potential risks with data lakes, and that is you can end up with a data swamp. If the data lake isn't well maintained, if mistakes in the data aren't fixed, if adequate metadata isn't provided, if multiple, but different, versions of the same data are coexisting, if formats aren't adapted to the software used, you run the risk of getting this swamp-like situation, which can be a dangerous place to get lost, and really becomes a place where data go to die. And so people came to recognize there were some limitations to this approach as well, which leads us to the current preferred solution, which is the cloud. The idea here is that a data cloud is something that contains data, like a data lake, that is structured, semi-structured, and unstructured, so it's very flexible in terms of the contents. But it doesn't rely on a local server. It doesn't rely on local maintenance of the equipment, because it's off somewhere else. I mean, this is when you use things like Amazon Web Services, better known as AWS, or Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud, among others. And also, because it's fully online, it's more accessible. And truthfully, it's more adaptable. You can get more space immediately. You can get more computing resources immediately as you go. And so there's some huge advantages to storing and working with big data in the cloud. But, as with every other solution, there are some risks, and I'm going to call it data dissipation. The major risks of storing data in the cloud have to do, first, with security, where the organization may not be keeping track of who has access to the resources, or it might be susceptible to hacking. And second, there's cost containment. When things are infinitely expandable at any time, you may not be keeping track of the costs that you're racking up. And third, there's the remote possibility that the services you use might become temporarily inaccessible, or they may disappear completely. And so you do run the risk of your data kind of dissipating, or not knowing what's happening there. Because we're in the data cloud era, it's worth pointing out a couple of variations that have become particularly popular. One is the multi-cloud, also called Polynimbus. This is using several different cloud storage and computing providers simultaneously. So you might use both Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud and use some IBM Cloud computing resources. And the point here is you actually can integrate them so they're in a single heterogeneous environment, so it's as though they were in a single thing. Now, that's one popular approach because it lets you use the strengths of each of these providers. There's also hybrid cloud. This is where you're using both a public cloud, like AWS, and you're using a secure private cloud. Think of a local server. 
And what that lets you do is it lets you keep a lot tighter control on what happens here. And it's possible also to move back and forth. You can take things from the private cloud, push them into the public cloud, we need to expand or if you need transparency. But times you need extra security, you bring it from the public to the private. And so there are a lot of variations that can be used to meet the demands of your organization's data computing and the regulatory environment. And so there are a few things to think about when looking at these different approaches, the data warehouse, the data lake, the data cloud, along with the multi-cloud and the hybrid cloud. Number one is accessibility. Some of these allow more access to more people and from different situations. The cloud's going to be the best at that. The data warehouse is going to be the most limited in that particular respect. There's also the flexibility. What kinds of data can you put into it? And also, can you scale up your resources as needed? And then the third one is security. How much control do you have over your data? How much control do you have over your costs? And how are you able to meet the demands of the regulations that you're working with? Using these three criteria, as well as things like the cost of purchase to maintain and the learning curve to get started on any one of these, your organization can choose. Do you want a data warehouse? Do you want a data lake? Or do you want to work in the cloud? Or maybe there's even a situation where you do want to keep those files on a single computer for the tightest possible control. But any one of these is going to allow you to make an informed choice about how you deal with your data, especially all the variations that constitute big data and the promise that it has for your organization.